All right, so our whirlwind um, review of slope. So slow me down if I go too fast or I say something that you don't remember and you're like, how did you do that? I, I'm going on the assumption that we've done this in Algebra 1, 2, Algebra 3, 4, a little bit in geometry, right? So here's your definition of slope. So these should not be any different, but what I would like to emphasize is that although these are different things that slope is, your true definition is the fact that it is a rate of change of y to x. You will talk a lot about that in calculus next year. So rate of change, although it is the difference in y over the difference of x, or rise over run, what it really means is that it's a rate of change of y to x. And then um, down here, they're just saying that um, x sub 1 cannot equal x sub 2 because if you have 0 in the denominator, what kind of slope is that? Can you have 0 in the denominator? If that occurs, what's the actual slope? Nope. Undefined. So that would be undefined, which is a vertical line. So remember our quadrants have signs to them. Quadrant 1 here, these are slopes to know. So quadrant 1 This is a positive quadrant because it's bordered by a positive times a positive. This is your negative quadrant. It's bordered by a positive times a negative. This is a ne uh, sorry, a positive quadrant. It's bordered by negative and negative. If you multiply two negatives, you get that positive. And then this is a negative quadrant. It's bordered by a negative and a positive. So if you multiply those borders together, it tells you what the sign is. So if I happen to do any positive slope is going to be tilted so that the ends of that line are in both of the positive quadrants. It doesn't matter if it goes through a negative quadrant or not. It matters where the ends of that line are. So there's a positive slope. Then this would be a negative slope. What would slope zero look like? Nice little horizontal line, right? Slope of zero means it actually has a slope. It has no incline. It's very easy to walk on. But an undefined slope, as I've proven in the past, I cannot walk up because I put myself in a cast with two surgeries later. Can't walk up a vertical line unless you are who? Well, I wanted to prove to my freshmen that you can't walk up a line. So I guess I really proved it because I snapped all the tendons in my ankle. It really kind of hurt a lot. A lot. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, it hurt a lot. So, therefore. <laughs> All right. Oh, you didn't tell me you couldn't see that. So there's our undefined slope, vertical. So then we have some examples. So look at example one. You are to find the slope of the line from the graph. Now, there's no nice, happy uh, points on there. So you've got to make a decision. You put some points on the line where the line crosses nice, perfect grid lines. Like I would not want to put a point right here because I, I don't know what that is. It's a fraction, right? A fractional point. This is a nice point too. So I'm going to choose those two points. You could have chosen any other two points. It shouldn't matter what points you choose versus me. We should both get the same answer. So if they give me a graph, I'm going to stair step my slope. I'm going to do my rise and my run. So my rise is how far up? Uh, mine, it's 2. And it's in a positive direction. A rise is positive. A fall is negative. A run to the right is positive. Run to the left is negative. So then I went up 2, and then I'm going to the right. How many? 4. So that's a positive 4. Or, you know, if you don't want to pay attention to the direction that you're rising and running, just look at the tip of this line. What quadrant is it pointing to? Quadrant 1, and isn't quadrant 1 a positive quadrant? Therefore, it should be a positively sloped line. So our slope, m equals 4 over 2, doesn't m equal 2? Oh, I did that backwards. Sorry. 2 over 4. It would be handy if I did my rise, huh? So isn't this 1 half? 
I knew that looked funny because that's too shallow for it to be two. If I don't give you um, the graph and you have to find the slope between these two points, you're going to use your slope formula, which is above. So I'm going to name this point x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, and we're going to run it through the slope formula. m equals 100% of the time you will always see me, bless you, put in the operation symbols but not x sub 1's, y sub 1's. Because if I'm going to put in a negative behind a subtraction sign, I don't want to make a mistake on my signs. So y sub 2 is 10, y sub 1 is 6, x sub 2 is 2, and x sub 1 is 4. It doesn't matter which point you put first, but it does matter that the point needs to be vertical to itself. So the 2 and the 10 need to be vertical to themselves, the 4 and the 6 need to be vertical, your y's must be up top, and your x is on the bottom. Then perform your math. On the bottom, I am going to add the opposite. And so I end up with 10 minus 6 is 4, 2 plus a negative 4, negative 2. Overall, don't I have a slope of negative 2? Then you're going to have to graph the line given the slope and a point. Now that point is not the y-intercept, but it doesn't matter. I can, given a slope and any point, I can always graph a line by, what do you do first? What? <laughs> so plot that point. So we're going to plot your point. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, negative 1, negative 2, there's that point. Then the second step, you're going to, and this is a technical word, stair step, the slope. You're going to do your rise over your run. So if the slope is 3, that's not a fraction, so I'm going to put it as 3 over 1. My other slope, I could change both signs. I could also stair step negative 3 over negative 1 because that still gives me a value of positive 3. So your rise goes over your run. So a positive 3 means I'm going to rise up 1, 2, 3. So there I'm stair stepping up 3, but to the right 1. Plot a point. I could do this all day long. 1, 2, 3, to the right 1. Or I could go from this point down 3 because it's negative, but to the left 1 down one, two, three, but to the left one. So long as they all follow along the same line, we are good. Then connect your points with an arrow on both ends. And from there I could ask you to write the equation of the line if we wanted to. It would be y equals what? What's the slope? Three, so three x plus one, right? That brings us to the forms of a line. So highlight these. You must know these. You've had them since Algebra 1, 2. Standard form, in my opinion, is useless. Really is. You'll use it in calculus. But for the most part, we don't use it a whole lot. Um, point slope form and slope intercept form are the most useful forms. This is most useful for graphing of an equation and seeing the slope and y-intercept. This is most useful for writing the equation of a line. You'll see me using this nine times out of ten to write the equation of a line. So you might want to put that to the side. We use this to write an equation. And we use this to graph lines. So you ready to write some equations? This is too much for our brain last period on a Friday. I can't handle it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to find the equation that passes through point 1, negative 2 with a slope of 3. I have a point and a slope. The minute I have a point slope, step 1, start with point slope form. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. I am going to substitute in only for these values, y sub 1, m, and x sub 1. 
the plane X and the plane Y will remain the same. They won't change. So I'm going to label my point as X sub 1, Y sub 1. And this slope is represented as M. That is clear to you, isn't it? It's not fuzzy? Okay. Good, good, good. So then plug and chug. So step two, sub values in. So I have y minus, instead of y sub 1, I'm putting in a negative 2. Some of you are used to changing that automatically to a plus, that's fine. Equals, and instead of my slope m, I'm putting in 3, times x minus, and instead of x sub 1, I'm putting in a 1. Then your final step, we always, if they don't tell you what form of a line to put it in, always assume that you're going to put it into slope-intercept form. So solve for y. In other words, you want it into y equals mx plus b form. So take care of your double negatives. That should be a y plus 2. Distribute your 3. Then we have a fun word problem. Remember, all of this is just using slope and writing equations. So are we ready to move on? Is anybody still working? Okay. No, not yet. I'm, I'm just waiting for everybody to catch up. Okay, we good? All right, so let's look at the word problem. And we're going to have to write our own equation. So it says write a linear equation. That means that we're going to write it in y equals mx plus b form. We might not start with that form, but that's the form we'll end up with. Um, giving the net sales y in terms of the year x. So they're telling you what y is, and they're telling you what x is. So y is net sales. Y is net sales. And x is the year. So up here, they're going to give you two ordered pairs. In 1997, Barnes & Noble sales, so there's a year, correct? Barnes & Noble sales were $2.8 billion. Isn't that one ordered pair? That's an X and a Y, isn't it? We've got our sales and our year. So our year, I'm going to write one ordered pair as 1997, comma, and my net sales, 2.8, knowing that that's in billions. The other one's in billions, too. So we'll just write as 2.8. I certainly don't want to write it in billions. It's huge. Then for your other ordered pair, and in 1998, there's your year, net sales were 3.0 billion. So I'm going to write a second um, ordered pair. 1998 is my X, and 3.0 is my Y. So this is my x sub 1, y sub 1. This is my x sub 2, y sub 2. This time I don't have a point and a slope. I cannot write an equation unless I have a point and a slope. I have two points and no slope. Can I find my slope given two points? OK. So the very first step to part A, so I'm going to put part A out here. My very first step is to find the slope. So I'm going to use the slope formula, m equals. I read out my template. I'm going to substitute in. y sub 2 is 3.0. y sub 1 is 2.8. x sub 2, 1998 and x sub 1, 1997. What's 3 minus 2.8? 0.2 over 1. 
So we don't normally have a slope of 0 0.2, but this is a word problem. And so my slope is 2 tenths. That's my rate of change of y to x. So what that says is as y increases by 2 tenths, x increases by 1. So in other words, as a year increases by 1, the net sales increase by 2 tenths of a billion dollars. Isn't that nice? That, that's a good thing. All right, so I haven't found my slope yet. Or I found my slope, I haven't found my line. So now I have a two points and a slope. All I need is one point. So use your point slope formula. Now I know that some teachers teach you to write your equation using y equals mx plus b. I find students make a lot of errors doing that. The math for what I'm doing is easier and you don't have to remember to rewrite the equation. So we're going to start with the point slope formula. You choose which point you want. Which point do you think looks nicer? Easier to use. I like the one without the really big decimal, right? Because 3.0 doesn't count as a decimal, I'll just make it 3. So I'm going to choose that point and then we're going to use m for our slope here. So, um, and you could choose the other point if you want to. So if somebody wants to be cantankerous and choose the other point, we will both get the same equation. So go for it. So I'm going to do y minus, and instead of, this is my, instead of y sub 1, we've got y sub 2. Don't let that bother you. So y minus 3 is equal to, instead of m, I have 0 0.2 times x minus, and my x value is 1998. So solve. So I need to distribute. And this is where the handy dandy calculator comes into play. So if you multiply that out, you get 399.6. And then if I want to add 3 to that, I get a final equation of y equals 2 tenths x minus 396.6. Add into numbers with opposite signs, you subtract. So there's my equation to solve. Then part b says use the equation to estimate the net sales during 2000. Is, have they given you the x or the y? Year 2000. Year is x, so they've given us an x, correct? So all we're going to do is take that equation that we just came up with, part b, we came up with um, y equals 0.2. Instead of x, we're going to put in that year 2000 minus 396.6. and go ahead and do the math. So therefore, the net sales in 2000 was, what are you going to say? Yeah, 3.4 billion. You must have a dollar sign in front of that. Um, some of you are putting dollar signs behind a number. Unless you're European, I don't understand that. Right? <laughs> Europeans will do that. We don't. Huh? Yeah, the dollar sign shouldn't be behind a number. It should be in front. Okay. Um, does that ring a bell? Yes, no? So that's probably one of the harder ones. This, this requires the most amount of work is to take the, um, find that slope and then use the point slope form. Then let's look at the last page. Is there a page on the back? Oh, no, second to last page. Okay, so we're going to graph the following by hand. So I'm going to blow up on this one. These are all linear. 
So can we graph this one the way it is right now? No. So instead, we need to solve for y. So what are we going to do with the x? Subtract it. Make sure it gets written first. So we're really looking at y equals, if I subtract x, I get a negative x plus 2. We have to look for m and for b. So what's my slope for this line? Negative 1. So I'm going to put negative 1 over 1, or, because I always want to look at slope in two different directions, change both signs. Positive 1 over negative 1. You're either going to go down 1 to the right 1, or up 1 to the left 1. They both will give you a negatively sloped line, because we have a negative slope. Then B is your y-intercept, isn't that 2? So start on the y-intercept at 2, so plot a point on the y-axis at 2, stair-step this slope of negative 1, 1, or 1, negative 1. And fill in the entire graph as far as you can go. And then go in the opposite direction as well. And then connect. Make sure you put arrows on the end of your line. Oops, I totally missed it. It's because I'm blind. Yours, of course, should be through the dots, right? <laughs> then the next two, if you see just x equals or y equals a number, that means you have a vertical or a horizontal line. These are actually very simple if you think about it in terms of the following. You're going to either cut the x-axis in half somewhere this way, or you're going to cut the y-axis in half somewhere this way. But which is which? Because it's vertical or horizontal. So for this one, it says x equals 4. Place a point on the x-axis, because it's x equals, at 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Plot a point. How are you going to cut that axis that it's sitting on in half? Does this cut it in half this way? No. So we wouldn't want a horizontal line. Doesn't it cut it in half this way? So that's the line that it becomes. So x equals is a vertical line. What's the slope of that line? Undefined, right? And then for y equals negative 2, notice that we're missing the x term. This one doesn't even have a y, so it's not even in the form of y equals mx plus b. But this one's missing the x term. Why? Because the x term, the coefficient is really 0x, and we wouldn't write something with a 0x. So for this one, plot a point on the y-axis at negative 2. <coughs> Bless you. And then am I going to cut the y-axis this way? Nope. How about this way? Yep. and then arrows. What's the slope of that line? Zero. All right, then I just want to point something out to you. So I put this in your notes. That, um, again, we had this before when we were looking at um, one of the other lines the other day, a curved line. But if you change your viewing window, these are two different um, lines. This is x equal or y equals negative x minus 1. Look at the slope. Don't they look exactly the same? But that has a slope of negative 10 and that has a slope of negative 1. How are these screens different? The lines look to me exactly like. Hopefully they do to you. What's different about them? See how we can distort them. This is, is this a standard viewing window? No, because it's got 15 to negative 15, right? So here they've um, stretched that out. What about this one? Yeah, notice that these are the same on both of them. So the y, max, and min are the same, but they've changed the x. This is extremely stretched out, isn't it? Whereas that one's compressed. That one's been compressed. So. Now take the same exact line and look what happens. So this is the same line, different than those two, but this is the same line. This is your standard viewing window, isn't it? Look at the somewhat steep because it's two. If it were one half, it should be shallower. 
But look what happens when we adjust not only the Y, but then we stretch out the X. All of a sudden that pulls, when you stretch out that X, we're stretching it this way. So that's why this is getting shallower. Now on top of that, we're pushing it this way because we're compressing that by making them have more tick marks in here. So it's getting pushed and pulled, so it's getting shallower. This one, they haven't changed this part, but they've compressed this part, which is pushing it to being steeper. So because I'm putting in more tick marks here, it's pushing it and making that a slightly bit more steeper. So be careful that viewing window. It can be deceptive. Parallel versus perpendicular. You need to know the slope. The slopes are important. So parallel lines have the same slope. <coughs> versus perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So for instance, if my slope is 3, what's the parallel slope? to 3. 3. Okay, if my slope is negative 1 half, what is the parallel slope? What's the parallel slope? Negative 1 half. Same slope, right? So it's not a trick question, but you've got to know that, oh, it's the same slope. But if I have perpendicular lines, if my slope is 3, what is the perpendicular slope? change the sign and take the reciprocal, right? If my slope is negative one-half, what is the perpendicular slope? Positive two. So that's all that you have to know about that. Then everything that we just did before that will come into play. They'll say that, you know, uh, write the equation of a line that's parallel to the line that passes through the point two, four. Well, they've told you something about the slope and they're telling you a point, so you can use point slope to write that. So look at the last page, we only have two more to go through. And so these um, pertain to parallel versus perpendicular. So this one they're telling you is parallel to the line. So they've given you a point, so they've given you x sub 1, y sub 1, and they've given you a parallel line. This is not the equation of our line. But this line is going to give us our slope. We have to do a little detective work. So how do we find the slope? That line is in standard form, which is about as useful as a gnat. I don't like gnats either. They're annoying. So how are you going to find the slope? Hmm? What form are you putting it in? Yeah, y equals mx plus b, slope intercept form, right? Right, so the first thing you want to do, you might want to write yourself a note, is for number one, find your slope. And write yourself a note that my slope, meaning your slope, is parallel to 2x minus 3y equals 5. So you have to solve that. So I'm going to get the y by itself, so you are correct. Subtract 2x. I get negative 3y. Put your x term first, negative 2x plus 5. And then for this part, it doesn't really matter how ugly the line looks because we only care about the slope. Divide everything by negative 3 every individual piece by negative 3. And so we end up with an equation of y equals the two negatives cancel and make a positive 2 thirds x and these become a negative 5 thirds. Really all I care about is this right here, don't I? So isn't my slope 2 thirds? The slope of this line is 2 thirds. So what is my parallel slope to 2 thirds? 2 thirds. So this is the slope that I'm going to use. Then the second step is you're going to use point slope. We have a point now and we have a slope. So we're going to do y minus 
y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So start plugging in. So we already identified our point. Our y sub 1 is negative 1. Our m we found out was 2 thirds. And our x is 2. So perform your math. Distribute. You cannot, yes you can take care of your double negatives, but you cannot, that becomes a plus 1. You cannot subtract 1 from both sides until you have distributed. So you've got a minus 1 here, but I don't want to subtract 1 here. Don't I want 1 as a form of something over 3? So if I multiply this as 1 over 1, if I multiply this by 3 to get 3, don't I have to multiply that by 3? Because this is 1 over 1. So to get like denominators, I multiply top and bottom by 3. So I ended up with subtracting 3 over 3. That's a 3. And so I end up with y equals 2 thirds x. A negative 4 and a negative 3 is a negative 7. Add and keep the sign over 3. These lines are parallel because notice that they have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. If they have the same slope and the same y-intercepts, it's the same line that can't be parallel. Okay, so that's another hard blast from the past for some of you. Then the last one is perpendicular. Same as what we just did, but your slope is slightly different. So we have a perpendicular line. Again, we have the same point, note, x sub 1, y sub 1, and um, the same equation. Didn't we already solve that equation for y? So let's not reinvent the wheel. So step one, we already found the slope. in number six above. Thank you. All right, so if the slope from the one that we just did previously is two thirds, what's the perpendicular slope? Change the sign, negative, and flip it, three halves. It's negative reciprocal, right? So this is the slope that we're using run through exactly the same thing. So use point slope. So our y sub 1 is negative 1. Our slope this time is negative 3 halves. And our x is still 2. Distribute. You. This time we have a negative times a negative, which gives us a positive. The twos cancel, don't they? And so we get a positive three, which is really fabulous because now when I subtract one, I don't have to deal with fractions. So here's what I would like to do just to prove to you that these are both parallel versus perpendicular. I want you to take your calculator. So take your calculator and go into y equals. And I want you to put in the original uh, equation that we saw for. Where'd it go? Here. So put in this one. y equals 2 thirds x. Use parentheses for your 2 thirds. So parentheses 2 divided by 3 x uh, minus and then in parentheses again 5 divided by 3 end parentheses so that's the line that we're creating lines that are parallel and perpendicular to so then in the second one let's put our parallel line that we came up with this one here 
So put this one in line in Y2. Again, using parentheses. Make sure you have a standard viewing window. And hit graph. They're super close to each other, but aren't they parallel? Some of you have the nifty newer uh, calculators that have them in color, don't they? Anybody? Do you? Not fun. Oh, because you got that Casio. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then go back into y equals and take out the second equation. So make sure that that's flashing on there and just clear it. And put in this equation that we found. They sh it should end up being perpendicular. So parentheses use the negative, not the subtraction. Negative 3 divided by 2 plus 2. And then hit graph. Did it work? It did. All right, any questions about that?